Good afternoon, everybody. Frankie Day here for Frankie Day's Models. Okay, guys, uh, for this uh, gloomy, doomy, overcast uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, I have for you to find the reveal video five for the Dumas Carol Moran tug in a scale of 172nd scale. Okay, guys, you guys are probably wondering and eating popcorn at the same time. Is when when the uh, maiden voyage for the George Washburn and the uh, Carol Wren is going to be. I went to the pond about five days ago. I went out there and and took my tug out there. But before I took it out there on the pond, all alongside the bank of the pond, there's all there's a tremendous gathering of uh, of moss and undergrowth that's actually floated to the surface that's come along the banks. Ain't no way to launch these boats, even a sailboat. It's it's kind of put our our model club out of commission till the stuff uh, so they get rid of that stuff. So I think the parks people out there that they, that they, that the caretakers that take care of the the ground the ground uh, in the in the water that probably going out there and uh, the groundsmen I should say will clean up same you know to be able to. Uh, so be able to do that. That's the reason why the delay I won't be able to take my washburn tug out or the Carol Moran. I'm at Aiken. It's ready to go now. I mean, it's, both tugs are ready to go all at once. But I can't do it until that stuff is uh, gone because you, you can't launch a boat out there, especially these power boats. They, get, they pick up that moss and the screws, you know, and tangles up, and <laughs> you're in big trouble. So I don't want to feel like playing the waiting game and, and wait forever. So let that stuff. Uh, Super side and also let the groundsman take care of that. Okay, this is the final reveal. I got everything done on this thing. I could have added more to it, like uh, fenders, bow bumpers, coil lines, crew members, all that stuff. I didn't add all, all that stuff is because this is not a showboat, and uh, it is an operational, full functional RC boat, and eliminates a lot of breakage. And cleaning and everything else by adding all these features to the boat, won't be able to clean it well, and it'll break and everything else. So I left all those off. So this thing is built right out of the box. Nothing added, just right out of the box. It's a sweet, sweet little kit, to say the least. Anybody who's interested in uh, rail control powered boats, even for the beginner. Intermediate, but this this is a good kit to build. You you, you uh, you'll have a good time building this thing. Dumas has really put their all in their boats now. They're starting to develop all these blown vacuum form hulls, expanded PVC uh, plastic they use that uh, supersedes the, the customary plywood they always use in their kits and uh, their older kits. Now they give you multimedia materials. <clears throat> like I said, boy, this is a good little kit. Even the youngest tugster of the family should have no problem building this with a little uh, uh, parallel supervision and, and a little knowledge of how to put these things together. You should have no fuss, no muss. So you got to remember now, when you guys put these things together, this, this plastic is, is, when it comes to the mold, it has gel coat on it. And for anything for, to adhere to that hull, it's got to be roughed up with sandpaper. Especially when you join the, the sides together, it's got to be roughed with sandpaper, and also inside the hull has got to be roughed with sandpaper. Not the entire hull, just areas where it needs to be glued together. Then the epoxy and everything will fit, will glue together very well. It has grab. Before it don't, and time will just come off. It's like putting stucco on the house without putting no wire mesh on it to keep the stucco on the house. In time, the stuff's going to fall off. Same difference on here. I think I discussed that in video two. Okay, this is video five. Right behind me, as usual, in my new format of uh, of updating my build threads. I got my stuff located on here on my uh, files, on my pictures. And I got stills that I've taken of the, of the build cell. And, uh, and we'll come over and uh, zoom in and... Uh, and I'll uh, explain things as they go along and uh, return the video back to yours truly. And i uh, got a special treat for you too at this video. 
Okay. Guys, we're going to zoom in right now behind me. We're going to take a look at this. Okay, it's all done. This is on the starboard side. A paint that wore like anti phthalic red. All models I see of this, of this kit, even the catalog model, has a black waterline on it. Black waterline is not anti fouling. These things had red anti fouling paint on the, on the hull. Never have a black boot topping paint on there. This paint is specially made and designed for hulls to keep barnacles and other marine growth from adhering to the hull. And also, it, it, it uh, impedes moisture into the metal itself from rusting. That's why it's an anti fouling paint. It protects, oh, it gets rid of rust because it has some kind of mineral deposits in there, how it's, how it's developed. So that's what's on this hull here, red oxide paint. If you guys can't find red oxide, this is what I did. I got me a rattle can. I'm very good with rattle cans. Back in my younger days, airbrushes weren't uh, realized back then. And the old-fashioned airbrush method was when you blow through it with a hose. If we be telling you something blowing paint on through a hose, you're going to turn purple and blue, and first thing is good night, Irene. So you don't want to go there, so I'll go rattle cans. So make sure you mask off your hull very correctly. Everything's going to be masked off. You want to overspray because you got no control with, 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 with aerosol cans or spray paints, as you guys all know. That paints like that is only for one thing of overall painting in view or for masking only. So this whole hull was painted with an airbrush except down here. I masked a waterline and I rattle canned the... Uh, anti fouling paint on the hull. Comes out very good and much more, more better than the uh, airbrush method. It dries fast. Then I applied a coat of varnish on there uh, to seal the deal and the paint. Next video, here it is on the port uh, starboard quarter coming at you. And uh, real nice tug guys. I made this, I've got to mention in the videos there's a lip. This thing is like a friction lock. It locks in behind the cap rail of the, of the transom of the, of the uh, fan tail of the tug. This grating, stern grating back here snaps on there. I didn't glue this on here because I'll tell you why. Because I can remove this and adjust my rudder down here and uh, check, you know, just, just for inspection only. And in uh, case if something happens, you know, I can change the rudder out or something about tearing all this up and repaying everything. So this actually snaps out. I thought to mention that on the other videos. When I saw the aft end of this just now, it just came to mind. My apologies, fellas, for not mentioning this uh, four videos ago. Okay, put the starboard quarter looking at you. Rigging is very, very subtle. It's as of the real one. They don't give me a thread to kit, I don't think. I don't think I've received any thread at all. This is the letter of the thread that they give you on the George Washburn tug, the one I just completed. Okay, next video, next picture. There she is, starboard side. She's going up the river, Hudson River. I didn't add the jack staff on there. I, I had no need to put it on there. I didn't want to. Two reasons. When you're grabbing this cap and pulling it off, if you break it, there you go. Number two, I think sometimes they took them off. The only time to put the jet the instant staff on there is only in port only. As a matter of fact, I think it, I think it laid right across the uh, the bulwark inside of the bow. Then they picked it up, stuck it in there, and that's it. Put your instant staff on there. I think they're removable. That's how they wore the YTF, uh, uh, y, the, the YT tugs, the yard tugs, the, uh, the old Army ST uh, tugs. They had the same thing as that. They had a the instant staff, the jack staff right there was uh was removable. It pulled right off the bit and was stowed alongside the bulwark. Like I say, guys, I could have added coils of rope figures on here. I mean, really did a I mean, like it had uh, fenders on here and valve bumpers on here and. Uh, 
I, it's no need. Like I say, this is a full functional RC boat, and it, I, it, there's no need for it because I'm afraid if I add all the stuff like that, it'd be more. Everything would be cumbersome, it'd be in the way, and uh, a cleaning and everything like that. Besides, the things go in the box anyway. I got a special box where the thing fits. So, anyway, guys, this is a work boat. I don't need that much. It's good like it is right out of the box. Okay, back in the stern view. This thing works very well. I test it in the water. It works very good. There you're looking on the uh, port. Looking forward. There's the port side. See, the red oxide paint really does a good job. That's what they were, the red oxide. <clears throat> then it kind of toned down to a, to a lighter color as they got as they got old. There you go, guys. Look at the bow section. Some of the stanchions got little. Some of these stanchions were very straight. When I pulled them off the jig, something got loose somehow, and I guess they kind of got wobbly. Got you, the real stanchions were the same thing in these tugs. Here's one right there. It was once it was straight. I don't know how it got messed up. But they break off easy because they're soldered on here. They give you a jig on here. You take you take your copper wire and you lay it on the jig and you solder these things. Well, I took it from the jig. I guess this thing kind of moved out of the way. It could be straight. I could straighten it out, but leave it like it is. On the real ones, are cockeyed like that once in a while. There's Smiling Jack right there with his completed... Dumas 172nd scale Carol Moran diesel electric tugboat. She's a beautiful little tugboat, guys. I really love this tug. This tug, uh, it's, it's very pretty. I, I, I enjoyed this tug. It's, I'm very sad right now because it's done and it's finished and more builds are on the way. Okay, we'll take this camera and swing around back here. Surely finish up the video. Here I is again, guys. Let me sneak around here. And get in front of the bed. Grab me a cup of Joe right here. I got a lot of clean. I got a lot of ship's work. And get, get this mess cleaned up. I take down my plan board. Get everything cleaned up behind here. Everything organized. Break out paints. Here's the treat. Treat is, I shut down my radio control projects. No more boats. It'll be boats. It'll be ones built from plastic for static only. Make build threads. But as radio control boats, it take too long. I got to have a lot of stuff done by then. But like I say, I get the RC bug all summertime. It's time to go outside and play. I've been bogged, and bogged down in this house, you know, all, all year up in the winter. I come home from work. I want to go outside and play. It's nice and warm outside. And, and these toys need to have their heels stretched out. Get their legs stretched out by taking them out for a sale. So... Right now, it's fall, and uh, it's time to build some plastic. Okay, I joined Mr. Martin Lamott's uh, Bomber Command group build. And uh, so I'm going to start on this tonight. This is the Airfix 172nd scale Blenheim Bomber, or Blenheim. This is the... Uh, the Mark 1F version, the early version with the uh, the whole entire greenhouse. And uh, so I'm going to enter this in the Bomber Command series. Now, if I finish this, the paint scheme of this will be like that of the um, the Hamley Page, uh, the, um, no, the, uh, my God, what's that one? Well, I tell you, I'm having a brain freeze right now, guys. Getting too old or something. The Flying Barn Door. It was all black. This is going to be all black too. They give me two paint sketches on here. All black and light gray in the bottom and uh, dark uh, dark green and uh, dark earth. The customary REF colors. So this will be all be uh, painted black. And uh, like kind of the Whitley Mar. God dang. Man, I tell you. Got so much things going with my mind. It just... Excuse me for the brain freeze, guys. The Whitley Bomber. All black. I did two of those builds. One with the uh, three-tone camouflage and, of course, all black version. The Night Bomber version. That's this going to be. I think it'll look awful cool. 
all black. I can use different shades of, uh, of, of blacks on there and stuff, you know, and they look nice. So this is going to be my first entry for Mr. Martin Lambert's Bomber Command Group. He's got a lot of good subjects going on. Incidentally, you check out his video on on this old tooling, 1959 Airfix 172nd scale Wimpy Wellington Bomber. I mean, he, he took an old turd and then not only polished it, but he bought the state of art what's out there floating in the market today. Congratulations, Martin. You did an excellent job on that uh, Wimpy, sir. Be must be congratulated on that. Did a very wonderful, marvelous job. And he's got posted pictures of that on YouTube too. Not YouTube, but on, on the Facebook page. And uh, so I'll be sure to review that and comment and well on that. And uh, I'm going to start on this tonight, Martin. And guys, this is going to be probably about three or four videos we get done. It's be helpful, simple. So it's time to bring out the. Uh, to me, uh, before doing anything, I gotta clean this area up. This place is, excuse my language, like President Trump uh, used, I quote, a shithole. And uh, so, all the smallers leave a debris and area of everything strewn all over the place when you're building. We all do that. That's, that's the nature of us builders. So, it always feels good and feel fresh. When everything's nice and clean, then you can start this model nice and clean. Okay, guys, this is the conclusion of the video. This video may be at two parts, so uh, stay posted because it'll be two petty uh, two videos. I, I can tell this way I've been rambling and showing the the final reveal of the, uh, the uh, newest Carol Moran. So if anybody is interested in buying this kit, this is a very beautiful kit. It's not that difficult to build. It's got pictorial diagram instructions along with the written instructions. Can't go wrong. If you array from those two building guides there, God help us, what that boat's going to look like. You can't, it's foolproof. Ain't no way you can get off track. It explains everything. So it's all good. And uh, the kit's all good. And uh, it's a wonderful little kit. If all your tug uh, tugboat pans out there, you'll find it a very great and rewarding companion. That's your tugs. It makes a good display piece too when you get done. Okay, this is Frank Day signing off. Make Mama happy. Take care of the babies. Take care of yourselves. Spend wisely. Stay focused when you drive and walk in public. Spend wisely. And uh, I love you guys very much. And the video number one for, for the uh, Airfix 172nd scale. Blend them this little tooling kit. New one. And uh, I'll have that shaking your way probably by... Uh, by this Saturday. <coughs> Excuse me. So that'd be it. So be prepared for Saturday. Video number one for Martin Lamont's Bomber Command Group build featuring a new tooling Airfix 170 second scale Venom Bomber. So stay tuned, stay posted for that. I got I got shaking your way, guys. And uh, so it's time for you to shake on out of here. And you guys take care and God bless you guys. And uh, as soon as weather prevails, a lot better because it's raining out there now and all that moss all that stuff clears up there'll be some two good videos coming your way it'll be maiden voyages for the Carol Ran and also the George Washburn tow tug okay it's Frankie Day signing off time for you to leave it's time to clean up this uh, this mess and um, and uh, you guys take care and uh, I'm out of here take care boys God bless you fellas